Robinia Suda Acacia and Gladitsia triacanthos are both stunning trees with a lot of similarities, but one of them is a murderer, so let's talk about it. Now, due to the black locust being banned in my location, I don't have any footage of the black locust pods, but I was able to find some footage of the leaves and thorns of one I found a few months ago in Colorado. We're gonna start with a physical description that applies to both, and then dive into the differences and benefits of each. And if at any point you get confused as to which tree I'm talking about, just look at this corner of the tree, or er, screen. I'll make sure to have the video I'm talking about posted there. Both trees have odd pinnately compound leaves when mature, they can both be quite pokey, they both have seed pods, and they both tend to spread quite vigorously. On top of it, they're both nitrogen fixers, drought tolerant, coppice friendly, and rot resistant. The many similarities can make them seem really difficult to differentiate, but each characteristic has pretty noticeable differences if you know what to look for. Starting with the leaves, the leaflets of the honey locust are about 1 to 1.5 centimeters long and about half as wide. They also tend to exhibit a glossy sheen or a smooth and slick texture. The black locust, however, has slightly larger leaflets ringing in at about 2 to 2.5 centimeters and generally exhibit more of a matte or an eggshell sheen with a silky texture. Both have semi-round or oval shapes, but the honey locust tends to be a bit thinner and elongated in comparison. The easiest way to tell the difference between the two leaves would definitely be the sheen, though. Both trees have thorns, but the main difference is that the honey locust generally has nice swords that protect its older growth, while the black locusts have small daggers that are more similar to rose thorns that primarily protect the leaves. This footage is of very young thorns on a black locust, but they can grow up to 2 inches long and are found most easily on growth younger than 5 years of age. The honey locust generally has its thorns on older growth, something like 5 plus years. The seed pods of the honey locust range from 6 to 18 inches and commonly appear to spiral, while the black locust pods are only a length of 3 to 4 inches and are most commonly flat and uniform not spiral. Both trees spread vigorously, but the key difference is that the honey locust tends to spread through seeds, while the black locust tends to spread through runners and seeds. The fact that the black locust spreads through runners makes it a greater threat to the surroundings, and as such they are heavily regulated throughout the US and even considered invasive noxious weeds in some areas. So now that we know how to identify the two, let's talk about why it's important. The honey locust is known as the honey locust because of its sweet pods. Though the leaves are commonly eaten by cattle as hash, the pods of this tree are eaten by cattle and humans alike. The younger, more tender pods of the honey locust can be cooked and eaten similarly to beans. And as the pods mature, the green pith within the seeds turns to sweet ooze similar to the Kentucky coffee tree. And while the sweet ooze is edible, it's not as pronounced as all the articles make it out to be, and it's definitely difficult to find the sweet spot for harvest. The seeds when mature can be used as a flower alternative, though I have yet to develop any recipes that taste good or form well. If I do manage, I'll post that video somewhere up here. All that being said, not a whole lot of research has been done to test the safety of the honey locust, so I would definitely recommend always roasting your seeds at 145 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours before consumption. And if you're going to eat the pods, cook them thoroughly as well. As if the tree wasn't already perfect for pastures, the crown of the tree is usually open and allows for dappled shade beneath, making it ideal for shade-tolerant gardening or silva pasture. The black locust, on the other hand, is considered toxic to humans and most animals. Not only are the pods considered toxic, but the leaves, bark, and roots are as well. This makes correct identification incredibly important. And it also means you need to know what's growing in your pasture, as animals like sheep, cows, and horses have been known to eat themselves to death by grazing on the leaves of the black locust. Furthermore, the black locust is considered an invasive species in many states due to its aggressive nature and its ability to thrive even in drought and cold. And as such, its import and export is heavily regulated. The black locust is a much better tree for lumber due to it being noticeably more rot resistant and growing a little straighter, but it's important to remember that invasive species require much more maintenance by nature. While both the honey locust and the black locust are fast growing, drought tolerant, rot resistant, coppice friendly nitrogen fixers, one of them is an invasive toxic species. When considering the pros and cons of each tree, it's easy to think that the honey locust wins every time, but that's not always the case. Depending on your ecological niche, it really could go either way. Black locusts are much more cold and drought tolerant, 
significantly more aggressive, and the lumber is much more usable and rot resistant. And maybe that outweighs the edibility of the honey locust for you. The edibility of a plant does nothing for you if it can't survive. So to wrap things up, remember that proper identification is crucial for your survival, and that proper planning and management is crucial to the survival and well-being of your ecosystem. That was a lot of information, and I totally understand if it was very difficult to follow along. So if I was unclear on anything, or if you're still not sure what tree you have, or which tree to plant, please leave a comment below and I will do my best to help you out. So until I see you in the field, happy hunting!